since the operations of ARB Apex Bank. Speaking to our reporter, Daniel Opoku, the General Secretary of the Union, um, John Amegashi, alleged that the MD of the bank has not invested prudently to raise profit margins of the bank. The General Secretary of UNIC of John Amegashi recalled the role of the previous MD for issuing loans to support rural folk expand their businesses. Again, he emphasized the immeasurable contributions to the previous MD and board for procuring equipment to support rural business. However, he was worried the current managing director has cancelled those agreements which have affected operations of those in the rural areas. General Megashi also raised concerns with regard to the bank engaging investments which are not yielding the needed profits to boost its margins. He brought in ATM machines which could not be used by any of the rural banks. As I speak with you today, when he took off office, there was an arrangement in place to have some service providers who attend to their um, networking systems. He cancelled that and single-handedly awarded that contract to STL, which had resulted in additional 14 million Ghana cedics extra that was paid to the service providers. He has currently petitioned the Bank of Ghana and the BNI to begin investigations into the operations of the bank before workers are declared redundant. We just want to make it very clear for the, the populace to know that if Bank of Ghana, that has the supervisory roles over the ARB Apex Bank, will not do what is needful, it means they are contributing towards the collapse of the bank. The General Secretary again hinted of considering legal redress in the next few days if the BOG and BNI should relent in beginning the investigations. In more business news this afternoon, the Dankoa Institute, uh, that is DI, has questioned the basis for which some government contracts are so sourced. According to the group, its executive director, Nana Atobu Akwenu, says that the nation has so far lost over $2 billion due to sole sourcing. The group says it has undertaken due diligence on a number of public procurement contracts which were awarded on either sole sourcing or restrictive tender basis. Since 2010, involving over 12 billion cities, the group argues that an estimated 65% of savings could have been made if those deals were subjected to competitive tendering. This, the institute says, translates into 7.8 billion city savings in public funds. The executive director of the institute, Nana Atubra Kweku, alleged that most of the public procurement contracts appear to have been motivated by corruption rather than development. About two or three weeks ago, what was it? There was something in Parliament about the building of a university in Somania. And within what had gone through Parliament, we're going to build a bungalow for $2 million. But if not for the noises that were made by the minority, it had gone through. Whether we like it or not, monies were going to be spent on that to build a bungalow for $2 million. It's been reviewed to 500,000, but even that is too high. My point is that we are being shortchanged. The group cites the recent purchase of pesticides by CocoBot, as well as a bass branding exercise by Smarties, as clear cases of corruption and a sole sourcing. Nana Tubra said the Institute will share the findings of the research with the country as part of the necessary national debate to make value for money assessment a critical component of public expenditure. We are actually looking at the entire period between 2009 to date. And so it's a comprehensive list we are looking through. There's going to be a series of publications, possibly one coming out today, tomorrow, through <laughs> till next week, and maybe even beyond. So it's, it's quite comprehensive what we are looking at. Okay, so that will be it for business on Midday Live. My name is Martin Esidida.